all started November 11, 2015. I was asked to hand over to the most senior director in my office. And I was crying as I was handing over. But today I'm handling the mic and I'm giving glory unto God. You may not understand it. I don't know how it worked out. I don't know who put me on the roster. But I'm on the roster today, November 11, 2018. There's a purpose for today. There's a purpose for today. I wish you will have understanding. I wish you will understand what God, what heaven is saying. What heaven is saying today. I would just want you to know that you are at liberty to love me or to hate me. You are at liberty to hear this word and it mixes with faith in your heart or you can throw it away. I want you to know today is a different day. It's a separate time. It's a, it's a special season. It's a special dispensation. I'm not afraid to say what God has asked me to say. I don't fear anyone. Who I fear is the, the person that sent me on this message. And what he has told me today is that tell my people, 
as many as desire mercy will find mercy. He kept me at home for three years. And it is for a purpose. It is for a purpose. If you like, get tired of this testimony. You, I will never get tired of it. Because every minute that he reminds me, he tells me something new. And he tells me about somebody. He tells me about somebody. There is somebody here today. There is somebody here today. You have been humiliated. You have been derided. You have been made stupid. You have been made foolish. But God says today is your day of rising. It's your day of lifting. It's your day of hearing. It's the day of change. It's your day of help. I have a topic this morning. I fought this topic for so long, but God says yes. Statutes of divine mercy. That's what we are talking about this morning. The statutes, the laws, the principles of divine mercy. Because there's mercy in the house this morning. As I sat there, and I had, done, I had said that in one meeting recently, I, I, had, I went to visit, I went to visit a family. And I went to visit a family when I carried fibroids like I was carrying a baby. And I got into that house. I was meeting somebody for the very first time. I sat on a chair. The chair was like cream colored. And my period started in the house. And <laughs> when it comes, it's, it's like a rushing wind. It came like, like water from the tap. I could not stand up because everywhere was red. And I was like, God, how do I manage this situation? What am I going to do? How will I clean this furniture? And I'm told that there's someone in this house right now. You are facing such embarrassment. You are facing such pains. You are facing such disgust and disgrace. Today is your day. Today is your day. I was, I was also on an Emirates flight. Emirates business class, their seats are like yellow. They are cream colored seats. I sat in that place and within one minute of going to the bathroom and coming back, another lump came out and I, I could not stand up throughout the flight and I was crying unto God, for how long? For how long? For how long? long for how long for how long will this be but today i can tell you if you are in that category by reason of my testimony you are set free today you are set free today you are set free today in the name of the lord jesus father we thank you this is the day that you have made you need to rejoice and be glad father do what only you can do I, I don't have anything of myself to share with these people. But Lord, I know you have a word for your people. And so Lord, speak unto us that we will hear you. And you will be glorified. Only you will be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. I have liberty to say a few things. And then we'll go back to pray. Yes, I want to thank Senior Pastor. I want to thank whoever that has decided to sentence me to sleeplessness uh, for bringing me to the altar. Because uh, for you, it may be fun, but for me, it is not. When I have this responsibility, when I have the opportunity to hold the microphone, I give praise unto God, and I thank you, sir, for making this possible. The text that I have for this morning is a strange one. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, In the beginning, 
God. That's all. In the beginning, God. Can you say that with me? In the beginning, God. say it well now. I want to hear you well. Who was at the beginning? Who is at the end? In the beginning. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read John chapter 1. Let's put a bit of flesh to it. John chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 1 to 4. In the beginning was the word. And you know we said in the beginning, God. So the beginning God is not past tense. This is to explain it to us. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In verse 2 it says the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The message this morning about the status of divine mercy is for the elect of God. It's a message for the speaker. It's a message for me and the message for you, the hearers. It's a warning and institu an instruction in righteousness. Hallelujah. The Lord took me back to my beginning. The beginning when I first met him. In the beginning when I started to work. In the beginning when I first fell in love. How was it? When I started to walk in God's vineyard. I want you to cast your mind back to the beginning. For some people, today is your beginning. If you like, say amen. If you like, don't say amen. But one thing that I've established in my life is that when your prayers are answered, you don't know. You can have 100 vigils. You can have a million visits to mountains. But the day God will answer your prayer, it might just be one small special number that is being rendered in church. And somebody says, today your prayers are answered and you say amen. But some people will miss that day. I pray you will not miss today. Because I know for sure that testimonies will come out of today. I, if you had a beginning, you would remember your first day in Foursquare Sokoro. My own experience in Foursquare Yaba. My experience in Ajebo, in Foursquare Camp, in Ajebo, the first day that I stepped in there. The first day in Foursquare Sokoro at the other end. When it had not even been taken, we had not rented the premises. How was it at that time? And the first day that we came into this place, when negotiations were on to procure this property, incidentally, animals were being kept here. Some people will understand what I'm talking about. So this place that is now housing human beings was inhabited by animals. There was piggly here. There was rabbitry here. There was fish pond down there. Animals were all over the place. But today, Human beings are here. Hallelujah! Amen. 
But the mercies of God has kept us over the years. It has been from day to day, level to level. In the beginning, we did not have money. In the beginning, we were not this many. But the message of the Lord was available to do everything that God wanted to do in Foursquare and Socorro. I wish, I pray that this morning we will understand the laws, the rules, the principles of divine mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm only going to look at two sides to this coin. The first one, the first one, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 11. It says, for the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election must stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Verse 12. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And number 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Verse 14, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Verse 15, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And you saw Pastor Temple read that scripture in Exodus. He read that God will be gracious unto whom he will be gracious. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him. Oh my goodness, verse 16. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It is God that shows mercy. Hallelujah. So the first part of it is heaven's prerogative, heaven's sovereignty. When heaven decides to show mercy to someone, nobody can stop it. When heaven decides to elect someone, when heaven decides to choose someone, he is chosen and you have nothing to do about it. If God that gave that gave the children unto, unto Isaac right inside the stomach of Rebekah declared that the elder shall serve the younger and we know that God cannot be unrighteous. God is righteous. God is just. God is true. He decides what he wants to do and you cannot say no. When he decides to open a door, no man can shut it. When he decides to shut a door, no man can open it. And let it be clear in your head, in your mind, in your spirit, that when God says yes, no man can say no. And when God decides to leave a man as he did to Saul when God has made up his mind to depart when God has departed no man can bring restoration that is why God must not leave us God must not leave me. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to whoever is willing to listen. Heaven said I should tell you. Sound an alarm in Israel. Sound an alarm in First Square Sokoro. Mercy is running out. Mercy is running out. But today, mercy is in the house. Mercy is in the house. As many as will cry out unto me. As many as will cling to me. And say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. You will receive mercy today in the name of Jesus. I said there are only two parts to it. The second part 
is the believer's requirement. And I'm going to spend time talking about Batmios, the blind. I have preached from Batmios before, but I'm surprised what God is saying to me this morning. Uh, it says to be candidate of divine mercy, you must demonstrate three qualities. To be candidates of divine mercy, how many qualities? The first one, it says in Hebrews 11.6, it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that must come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The first is be diligent. Please help me tell your neighbor, be diligent. Be diligent. If you turn your Bibles again to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10 from verse 46, I'm talking about blind Bartimaeus that he received his sight. The Bible says in verse 46, and they came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. What was he doing? Uh, let me hear you now. Are you afraid to talk? Do you have a problem with your mouth? Verse 47. And when he heard, when he heard, when he did what? He heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48. And many charged him. Many stopped him. Uh -uh. When people that can see have not even contacted Jesus, you, blind beggar, you are the one that he has... He will, please, can you excuse us? Let complete human beings see Jesus first. Maybe that's what you are told. Maybe that's what you've been experiencing. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But what did he do? What did he do? He cried the more a great deal. So he's not just crying the more. He cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49. And Jesus stood still and demanded him to be called. If they called the blind man, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, the same people that told you that you cannot come near, the same people that told you that it cannot happen again, the same people that told you that they would try and do something else for you, because this particular door is locked, they said, be of good comfort, Ibukumodushote. Rise. Be of good comfort, First Square Sokoro. Rise. The master called thee. Hallelujah. And he casting away his garments, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Is He's begging again. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. I'm getting back to my notes. The first one is diligence. And when I checked the dictionary, diligence, carefully and persistently carrying out an assignment or a job. Batmios consistently stood at the gate and expected people to give him arms. However he got there, I don't know. But he was consistent in going there. He was consistent. Everybody knew him that that man is always there begging. There's a friend of mine in this church that when he says 
I want to plead with God. He says, I beg God. I beg God. In the beginning, in Foscoa Socorro, we begged God. In the beginning, we prayed. In the beginning, we prayed. Workers prayed. Workers prayed. I don't mind about people that come to church only on Sunday. That is fine. You are welcome. But I'm talking about the elect. I'm talking about people that call themselves or are called by whoever. Leaders that cannot wake up to pray. That cannot join in the church to pray. That's the message I have for you this morning. There's a consistency that is required. There's a diligence that is required. It is expected of you to be here to pray with other people. No matter what you are doing anywhere else. And in those days, we went from house to house. And I've told you from the beginning, I'm not talking down on you. I'm talking to myself. I'm preaching to myself because I was there at the beginning. And I'm still here now. And I will be here until Jesus comes. And we will not be lost in the name of Jesus. As a family, as a family, individual units, when in the beginning we started, we used to have daily guide. And senior pastor has consistently given us daily guide. And what are we supposed to do with daily guide? We are supposed to have money devotion. Money devotion in our homes. We used to have money devotions. We used to have times that we will bring up the things that came out of money devotions. And we will bring it to church. And we will pray about it. Senior pastor still tries to bring, he, he brings uh, takeaways from his own money devotion. How many families are still on money devotion? <laughs> when it is 31st of December, he will go and buy again and bring them in their large numbers, and they'll be given to everybody free of charge. How many people have consistently used that, that uh, devotional in your family for money devotion? And yet, you are asking that you have divine mercy. Ah, hallelujah. You can't say hallelujah again now. You can't say amen again. But I'm telling you, you've got to hear it. We were reading through the Bible. We will read through the Bible and our vigils. Do I have a witness in the house? There are so few remnants in Israel. When we read these, these sections that are for the month, we used to have competitions. We will have competitions over what we have read. It made everybody in the house to read the Bible. Because the Bible says, how many of you are reading the Bible with me? Maybe that's what gets you annoyed. And you are not reading the Bible again. Hallelujah. You can use whatever guide that you have. But when last did you read the Bible in a year? When last did you go through the entire Bible? That you're not just running up and down from work to office, to office to market, market to there. And that's all. That's not what it's all about. Hallelujah. I said the first one is to be diligent. The second one is discipline. Discipline. They are all related that's exhibiting self-control. Consistency in obeying rules. Punctuality is obedience to rules. I happen to be an administrator. And I watch over human beings the way they do. If people need things, if people want things, Give them any time, they will be there. Give them any time. If you say 3 a.m., they will be there. Anyhow, they will find their way, they will find their way there. Am I lying? 
If I announce now that if you can get to me, to my office, at 5 a.m. tomorrow, and you have your CV in your hands, and you are looking for a job, that you will get the job, and first come, first serve, do you think I'll be able to breathe at quarter to five? Okay, even the previous night. Hallelujah. There's a discipline that comes with it. Absolute obedience to God. Absolute obedience to God. God expects to meet with you at specific times. God had to take me away to redirect my life. To turn us back to where we first met him. Where the discipline was the discipline of hearing God and not hearing men. Where the discipline was the discipline of commanding our morning and telling the day spring where it should stand. But when prosperity came, we went into different kinds of things and then commanding the morning became um, as much as we can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, in Galatians 1.8, said, If we preach a different gospel, if we preach any gospel, it says, but though we, or an angel from heaven, even if it is an angel that came from heaven, preaches any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you from the beginning, let him be accursed. It's what we were taught from the beginning. The principles of the scripture, the principles of obedience, the principle of serving God with all of our heart, that's what we are preaching. If you preach anything different from that, it says, let such be accursed. May we not be accursed in Jesus' name. The third one is to be deliberate. To be deliberate, to be intentional. To be intentional. Patmos was not disturbed by what people said. Hey, in the beginning, we were not troubled by what people said. In fact, people didn't even have opportunity to say anything because we were busy. We were busy. We were busy. It didn't matter what anybody was saying. It did not matter who was saying you should go or you should not go. It didn't matter who was saying, look at the way you are dressed. How can you be part of this kind of a team? It didn't matter whether you were able to, whether you are still in your begging position or not. It did not matter to us. What mattered to us was that we had a goal. Jesus is coming back and he must meet us ready for his going. Hallelujah. Batmeus was focused. It was deliberate. It was intentional. It was intentional. If you are intentional, you will wake up in the morning. Because when I'm talking about the season I was talking about, there are seasons that we didn't have generators. And yet, there was no light. And yet, we came to church. What did it mean? It meant that in some cases, we have ironed our clothes as far back as Friday for a meeting that is going to be on Sunday. Because we are not sure whether there will be light on Friday evening or there will be light on Sunday. We cannot wake up in the morning on Sunday and be looking for iron and be looking for electricity that we are going to use to uh, iron our clothes. We were ready. We were intentional. We were planned. We were deliberate. We were focused because we knew that we needed help. Hallelujah. I'm not allowed to share the things that I thought I was going to share. 
I'm not permitted so to do. But one thing that God has told me is that what he wants to say to you, he has said to you. Today, we're going to be standing like Bartimaeus. And like I told you, mercy, mercy is passing by. Mercy is passing by. Jesus is in the house. And there's assurance that he will have mercy on whoever will call upon him. It, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a general thing. You are very free. You are very free. The only people that I will plead with are people that have not given their lives to Christ before. You've not had an experience of knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Oh, I'm concerned about you. I will plead with you. I will beg you. Because if you don't take a decision this morning, you will tend to regret it. Because it's going to happen faster than you imagine. From what the Lord told me, for the others, oh, you are free. You are free to take a decision. But please note it in your books. Note it in your diary. Note it that I said this this morning. That if the Lord speaks to you and you decide not to obey, you stand to regret today. Write it down that I said so. Write it down that heaven told you so. Because that's what he told me. That today, today is the day of repentance. Today is the day that you will know that you need to turn away from your ways. And return to God. And return to the master. Because today he has come that he will visit you. And he will set you free. He has come to set me free. He has come to set me me free because he has come to set me free he has assured me he will set you free please let's rise up on our feet mercy is still available today the things that I saw are scary the things that I saw are scary I plead with you by the message of God. First and foremost, is there anyone here? You have not given your life to Jesus. You have not asked him to come into your heart. Please, if you don't mind, I will close our eyes on their behalf. I just want to give them some privacy. It's not compulsory that we should actually close our eyes. But I want to be able to minister to them. So if you are here, you are in this church right now. Please, if you are in church right now, there's a purpose for this message. I don't know why God brought you here today. I would like you to raise your hand. If you want Jesus to come into your heart, please raise your hand. It doesn't matter how many, whether it is one or even half. It doesn't really matter to me. Please just come, just come, just come quickly. Because I don't have much time. I don't have much time. I don't have much time. The people that are in the church, they still have to pray. They still have to pray. God actually sent me to them. So you come, come, come closer and let's pray. Just stay there. Just stay there. Let's pray. Let's pray. Is there any other person? Uh, is that all? Is that all? If there's anyone that is in this assembly and the Lord is ministering to you, that you have not had an encounter with the master. You have not met him before. I want you to come. I want you to raise your hand and to come. It's a day of mercy. God is showing you the greatest mercy that you require in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you for these ones that are here. I want you to pray. I want you to talk to God yourself. You may not know how to pray. You may not know how to express it, but just say something. Just tell God as your father. Say, God, have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my unrighteousness. Accept me as your son. Accept me as your daughter so that I can be part of your kingdom. That's all that you require to say. Say it in any language. Say it in any way that you can. And I'll pray with you. Father, thank you. Thank you for these ones that you have brought unto salvation today. Father, I pray they'll be established. They'll be established. They'll be established in the name of Jesus. Of 
called you into ministries. I've called you into ministry. But you are pursuing so many other things. Hey, today is the day of mercy. The Lord asked me to tell you, return, return, return. It is in returning that you will be blessed. It's in returning that you will hear me. It's in returning that you will hear me. It's a return. It is a return. 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 I expect you to cry unto God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Mercy today. Mercy, oh God, upon us, Jehovah. Mercy upon me, Jehovah. I seek for mercy. Thank you, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we give you praise. The much that you have allowed us to do, we have done. Over to you, Baba. Show yourself strong. Prove yourself in the midst of your people. Let your fire fall. Let the fire fall. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Precious Jesus.